PD-35 is more than just a new jet engine. It's Russia's biggest attempt in decades to rebuild its aviation independence. President Vladimir Putin has called it a historic comeback for Russian engine design, something the country hasn't achieved since the Soviet era. Built by United Engine Corporation, the PD-35 is a 35-ton thrust turbofan meant for wide-body and long-haul aircraft. It's backed by massive state investment, advanced alloys, and new digital production lines. Moscow wants this engine to replace Western imports and power the next generation of Russian jets. The real question now is simple. Can this bold engineering project bring Russian-made engines back to the center of global aviation? Let's find out. During a televised meeting at Novo Ogryovo, President Vladimir Putin told a room of engineers that Russia's engine program had reached a level not seen since the Soviet era. He named two projects, the PD-35 and the smaller PD-26, and tied both to a single objective, ending reliance on Western power plants for wide-body and long-haul aircraft. He framed the effort as a national priority. Civil fleets need a domestic high-thrust option, and the armed forces want common cores that can scale across transports and future platforms. Officials at the same briefing said the production ramp is already planned, with mass output targeted in roughly one to one and a half years. That timeline follows the current demonstrator runs and the setup of new tooling at UEC sites. The message to industry was direct. The PD-35 will anchor a family of engines, not a one-off. Tooling, digital models, and supply chains built for this core are intended to feed the PD-26 and other derivatives. The goal is fewer bespoke parts, more shared modules, and faster spin-offs that hit different thrust classes without starting from zero. Putin also tied the program to broader economic aims. Sanctions cut off imports and service support, so local capability must cover the full life cycle, from casting and coatings to test stands and field maintenance. Ministries have aligned budgets for that, including upgrades at the Perm Test Complex and added capacity for serial builds. In short, the Kremlin set clear markers, prove the core at test stands, freeze the design, and move to serial production on a clock. The PD-35 sits at the center of that plan, with the PD-26 following close behind. If the schedule holds, Russia fields a homegrown, high-thrust turbofan family that can support both civil routes and heavy airlift rolls. The PD-35's development has moved from design theory to real-world testing, and the early numbers have given Russian engineers something to celebrate. The first demonstrator engine ran at the OS-5 open-air test stand in Perm, the largest facility of its kind in Russia. It's built to handle engines up to 50 tons of thrust, making it the only site capable of safely running a project of this size. Over 50 successful tests, starts have already been logged. During these runs, the engine hit its designed thrust target of 35 tons, confirming the calculations behind its thermodynamics and fuel flow. Engineers monitored the compressor and turbine behavior closely, watching for excess vibration or temperature spikes. According to early reports, all readings stayed within design margins, which means the PD-35 met its first round of safety and performance expectations. With those results in hand, the project has now entered its second phase of testing. This part focuses on breaking down the core systems, compressor, turbine, and combustion chamber to validate endurance and heat resistance over long operating cycles. Engineers are using these trials to refine the airflow and cooling design while collecting data that will define the final production configuration. At the same time, expansion work has begun at the UEC Perm Motors plant to prepare for serial manufacturing. That includes new test cells for multiple engines running in parallel and updated equipment for component casting, assembly, and quality control. The goal is to have the industrial setup ready by the time flight certified cores finish testing. For Russia's aviation industry, this phase is where talk meets reality. Demonstrator results now translate into production tooling, supply contracts, and training for the workforce that will build the first generation of PD-35 engines meant for real aircraft. The PD-35 didn't start from a blank page. Its design builds directly on the groundwork laid by the PD-14, the first Russian turbofan to be fully certified in the post-Soviet era. That engine powers the MC-21 narrow-body jet and marked Russia's first major step toward a new generation of domestic propulsion systems. Engineers took everything learned from the PD-14, its digital models, its composite materials, as well as its additive manufacturing methods, 
and expanded those principles for something twice as powerful. One of the biggest advances came in materials and heat resistance. The PD-35's high-pressure compressor and turbine modules use next-generation alloys and ceramic coatings designed to withstand temperatures close to 2,000 Kelvin, which is about 100 degrees hotter than what the PD-14 could manage. That jump allows for higher efficiency and greater thrust without adding extra fuel burn, but it also pushed the engineering team to rethink how cooling works deep inside the engine. To deal with the added stress, the designers introduced new microchannel and air film cooling systems that protect turbine blades from melting under extreme heat. These are small passages built into the metal itself, directing air exactly where it's needed to keep surface temperatures stable. Combined with precision casting and 3D printing, the process ensures consistency that older Soviet designs could never achieve at scale. Digital design tools also played a major role. The modeling, Software used for the PD-14 program has been upgraded for more detailed simulation of airflow, vibration, and thermodynamics before physical parts are even built. Engineers can now identify potential weak points early and tweak shapes in virtual space, cutting development time and reducing wasted materials. By building on proven systems rather than starting over, the PD-35 program avoided some of the risks that come with an entirely new engine. It's a clear case of evolution instead of reinvention, with each component pushing a little further toward the high thrust, long life performance Russia needs to compete with Western power plants. The PD-35's construction shows how far Russia's engine manufacturing has come since the 1990s. At the heart of it is a massive 3.1 meter fan made with carbon fiber blades. That switch from titanium cuts roughly 600 kilograms from the front of the engine, improving balance, fuel economy, and thrust to weight ratio. The blades are built using a resin transfer molding process, giving them the strength needed to handle enormous centrifugal loads while staying light enough for smoother spool up and lower vibration. Weight savings alone don't explain the whole design shift. The PD-35 follows a modular architecture that lets engineers replace or upgrade sections without tearing down the entire engine. The gas generator core, which houses the compressor, combustor, and turbine, is standardized across multiple versions. That means the same tooling and parts can be used for future variants like the PD-26 or even smaller spin-offs, reducing both cost and maintenance time. Mechanics can swap modules in the field instead of sending the entire unit back to the factory, a change that significantly shortens repair cycles. Additive manufacturing, mainly 3D printing of complex metal parts, plays a huge role in making that modular concept work. Turbine blades, fuel injectors, and cooling ducts are now printed in shapes impossible to machine using traditional methods. Digital simulation software runs these designs through thousands of stress and heat flow models before a single part is produced. This approach reduces rework, improves reliability, and makes it easier to introduce design tweaks between test phases. The PD-35 is also the first Russian large thrust turbofan to feature a full authority digital engine control system. The new control unit tracks temperatures, pressures, and vibrations in real time, feeding data into predictive maintenance models. That means the engine can signal technicians about potential issues long before they become visible or affect flight safety. Together, these design and production methods turn the PD-35 into a scalable, maintainable power plant built for decades of service across both civil and military fleets. The PD-35's value to Russia goes far beyond the engineering itself. For decades, the country's civil and military aviation sectors depended on foreign engines, mostly from Ukraine and Western suppliers. Aircraft like the On-124 relied on the D-18T from Motor Sich, while regional jets used SAM-146 engines built in partnership with Safran from France. When those partnerships collapsed after 2014 and sanctions tightened, Russia suddenly faced a gap in its ability to power large aircraft. The PD-35 is designed to close that gap permanently. With 35 tons of thrust, the engine sits in the same class as the General Electric GE-9X and the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 family. That gives Russia, for the first time in modern history, a fully domestic power plant suitable for long-haul wide bodies like the IL-96 400M, future heavy transports, and even twin-engine military airlifters. In the short term, it replaces reliance on Ukrainian and Western suppliers. In the long term, it could become the backbone for new Russian-built airframes that were once dependent on imported engines. The timing of this project wasn't accidental. 
After Russia withdrew from the CR929 joint venture with China, the government redirected funding toward building an independent lineup of aircraft and engines. Rostec and United Engine Corporation positioned the PD-35 as the anchor of that shift, both as a practical solution for current fleets and a political statement of self-reliance. The engine's development now runs in parallel with the modernization of the IL-96 and the upcoming PAKVTA Slon heavy transport. Within Russia, officials described the PD-35 as a symbol of technological sovereignty in an era defined by sanctions and export bans. It's also seen as an export opportunity. Countries that operate Russian aircraft but lost access to Western service networks may now turn to engines like the PD-35 for replacements. For Moscow, that means keeping influence in global aviation markets through technology it fully controls. The PD-26 represents the next logical step in Russia's new engine family, built directly from the same gas generator core used in the PD-35. Instead of 35 tons of thrust, the smaller model is tuned for around 26, placing it in the same class as Western engines like the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 or the General Electric GEXX. The difference is that it's designed entirely in-house, using the same modular systems, digital design tools, and manufacturing infrastructure already proven in the larger engine. That gives engineers a faster development timeline and keeps costs under control without needing to redesign every major component. The Russian government views the PD-26 as more than a scaled-down test bed. It's already been selected for future military and transport aircraft, most notably the IL-100 Slon heavy airlifter, part of the PAKVTA program. This aircraft is meant to eventually replace the AN-124, which has become increasingly difficult to maintain because of its Ukrainian-built engines. The PD-26 offers the right combination of thrust, efficiency, and maintainability to serve as the power plant for that next-generation cargo jet. Deputy Prime Minister Denis Mantarov confirmed the plan during the 2025 Eastern Economic Forum, tying the PD-26 program directly to Russia's push to modernize its heavy-lift fleet. According to him, the new engines will not only power the IL-100, but could also be adapted for upgraded versions of the IL-96 or future military transports under development. That flexibility comes from the standardized core design, which can be tuned between 24 and 38 tons of thrust. Engineers can adjust performance by changing only a few modules, such as the turbine section or fan diameter, rather than rebuilding the entire system. This modular structure gives United Engine Corporation the ability to create a family of engines that share parts, tooling, and software, cutting years off development and certification time. In practice, it means Russia can field new variants faster, adapt to different aircraft needs, and expand production with fewer supply bottlenecks. The PD-26 might not match the raw scale of the PD-35, but it plays a critical role in turning the program into a flexible, sustainable platform for the country's aviation future. The first aircraft expected to showcase the PD-35 in civilian service is the Il-96-400M, a stretched and modernized version of the classic Russian wide-body jet. Engineers are evaluating a twin-engine retrofit that would replace its four PS-90A engines with two high-thrust PD-35 units. The new setup would transform the Il-96 into a far more efficient long-haul aircraft cutting fuel use by nearly a third and reducing maintenance costs tied to the aging four-engine layout. The simplified design would also allow it to meet future noise and emission standards that older engines can no longer satisfy. The shift to twin-engine operation is a major milestone for Russian aviation. Until now, most of the country's long-range aircraft relied on multiple engines for redundancy and power. The PD-35's high thrust rating finally makes a two-engine configuration feasible, aligning Russian design practices with international standards. For airlines or state operators, that means fewer engines to service, fewer spare parts to stock, and longer range with less fuel burn. The IL-96 400M, fitted with these new power plants, could operate efficiently on intercontinental routes for the first time, something earlier models struggled to achieve. On the military side, the PD-26 is expected to power the upcoming IL-100 Slon, the heavy lift transport developed under the PAC VTA program. Designed to replace the AN-124, it's targeting a payload of around 120 tons, making it one of the largest aircraft in production. 
Early design studies show that four PD26 engines will deliver the required thrust while providing better fuel economy and easier maintenance than the Ukrainian-built D18T engines currently used. There's also discussion about retrofitting existing. And 124 airlifters, once testing and certification for the new engines, are complete. That option would extend the service life of Russia's strategic airlift fleet without waiting for full-scale production of the IL-100. Re-engining older aircraft with domestically produced power plants would also remove the dependency on foreign suppliers for parts and servicing. Together, these integration efforts aim to standardize Russia's large aircraft fleet around a single engine family. By replacing outdated systems with the PD-35 and PD-26, Moscow hopes to reduce costs, simplify logistics, and double operational range for both civilian and military applications. To make the PD-35 program more than just a prototype effort, United Engine Corporation and its main subsidiary, Perm Motors, have started a broad expansion of Russia's engine-building infrastructure. The plan is to move from a limited test phase into full serial production by the late 2020s. That requires new facilities, new materials processing plants, and a workforce trained for precision manufacturing at a level that Russia hasn't attempted in decades. The Perm site, located near the foothills of the Ural Mountains, has become the center of this modernization drive. At the heart of the expansion are new high-capacity test stands capable of handling engines up to 50 tons of thrust. These are some of the largest ever built in Russia, designed to replicate extreme flight conditions and measure vibration, heat, and acoustic performance over long cycles. Engineers can now run complete systems continuously for hundreds of hours to simulate real-world operations. Alongside the test infrastructure, new foundries have been added to produce single crystal turbine blades, a process that once depended heavily on Western imports. Automated production lines for compressor discs, fan assemblies, and turbine sections are being phased in to shorten assembly times and improve consistency. Rostec officials often describe the PD-35 as proof that Russia can still deliver complex aerospace technology without external support. Sanctions forced a degree of isolation that made this program a national priority. The government responded with billions in investment to ensure that every stage of engine production, from alloy casting to digital control software, could be handled domestically. Each component is now part of a vertically integrated system that includes research institutes, testing facilities, and suppliers working within one unified network. The digital backbone behind all of this is what engineers call a common design environment. It links computer-aided design, virtual testing, and production management in one system. This digital framework allows engineers in different cities to collaborate on the same 3D model, track component revisions, and analyze stress data in real time. It's the same system being used to develop the smaller PD-26 and several classified military engines, showing how the PD-35 program is shaping Russia's entire future in engine design. By creating this industrial base, Russia is doing more than simply building an engine. It's rebuilding the entire ecosystem needed to support a self-sufficient aerospace industry that can compete on its own terms, no matter how restricted the global market becomes. The PD-35 program marks Russia's most ambitious aerospace engineering push in decades, linking state policy, materials science, and digital manufacturing. Its development creates a modular foundation for civil and military aircraft families. With the PD-26 variant underway and PERM facilities ramping up testing, the engine family is set to power everything from IL-96 airliners to super heavy transports. Whether it meets its global ambition depends on production timelines and international interest. But for now, the PD-35 stands as Russia's loudest answer to decades of dependence. Subscribe for more updates on aviation technology that's reshaping the skies.